Chapter 4. Peter's Denial. And he said, I tell thee, Peter, the cock shall not crow this day, before that thou shalt thrice deny that thou knowest me. Luke 22 34. Too often the betrayal of Judas and the denial of Peter are linked together, as though they were similar crimes, but a close examination will clearly reveal that there is no similarity between Peter's denial and the betrayal of Christ by Judas. After the departure of Judas, the Savior spoke again to the twelve, saying, Little children, yet a little while I am with you. Peter queried, Lord, whither goest thou? Jesus answered, Whither I go? Thou canst not follow me now, but thou shalt follow me afterwards. Peter continued, Lord, why cannot I follow thee now? I will lay down my life for thy sake. Jesus knew that Peter was in earnest and was willing to do all things for him. Life to Peter was less important than the love he had for Jesus, and without him, Peter didn't care to live. But Jesus wanted Peter to live rather than die. Jesus knew that to have Peter follow him in death would be a detriment to the cause of the gospel, and so explained, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat. Now, then, in the inspired translation of the Holy Scriptures by Joseph Smith it reads, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired you that he may sift the children of the kingdom as wheat. This renders a better insight to the greatness of Peter. Satan well knew that if he could thwart Peter, he would be able to sift and scatter all the children of the kingdom. The responsibility of keeping the church together rested upon Peter. Peter's mission was not yet finished. There were many important events that must be accomplished before Peter was to follow his master in death. He must stay alive for a while at least, to protect the flock. Jesus again spoke to the twelve, saying, All ye shall be offended because of me this night. For it is written, I will smite the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock shall be scattered abroad. Peter searched his soul trying to discover what he might say or do that would bring about this insolence. He could discover nothing. Furthermore, he could not conceive of doing such a deed. So Peter replied to Jesus, Though all men shall be offended because of thee, yet will I never be offended. But Jesus answered, I say unto thee, that this night, before the cock crows, thou shalt deny me thrice. Peter said unto him, Though I should die with thee, yet will I not deny thee. Likewise also said all the disciples. Matt. 26 34-35 These are challenges the devil delights to hear. Only too quick too sure are the good intentions of men, for the moment they have confidence in themselves, they expose themselves to the open door of temptation. It is only in fear and trembling that men have a chance for salvation, because no man is infallible, nor does he have the assurance that he is beyond the grasp of demons and devils. Later that evening, when the soldiers came out of the dark and captured Jesus, it was a shock to the eleven apostles. They stood in amazement, and one replied, Lord, shall we smite with the sword? Peter saw what was about to happen to his Lord, and wasn't waiting for any answers, he grabbed a sword and churned the air as he lunged toward the soldiers. They scattered and dodged, but one never quite escaped the wrath of Peter. With a swish of Peter's sword, the man's ear flew to the ground. The soldier was Malchus, a servant of the high priest. Jesus then rescued Peter from making a serious situation worse, and said, Suffer ye thus far after which he picked up the ear, replaced it upon Malchus's head and with healing powers, restored it as it was before. Turning again to Peter he admonished, All they that take the sword shall perish by the sword. Peter then relinquished his fury and sorrow, and replaced the sword to its scabbard. To further explain the necessity of such things, Jesus continued, Thinkest thou that I cannot now pray to my father? and he shall presently give me more than twelve legions of angels? But how then shall the scriptures be fulfilled, that thus it must be? And, the cup which my father hath given me, shall I not drink it? Turning to the chief priests, he said, But this is your hour, and the power of darkness. The soldiers bound the hands of their captive in cords and led him away. It was truly an hour of darkness. It was useless for the apostles to contend against the forces that took their master. They were left alone. In that deep, depressing, foreboding feeling which comes into every man's life, they were left in despair. They turned with their grief and departed, neither knowing where to go or what to do. Peter and John had followed from a distance as the soldiers hauled the Lord to the palace for his trial. After the guards entered the palace with Jesus, Peter and John entered into the lower part of the palace and sat with the servants to see the end. Peril, calamity and despondency filled their breasts, greater than they had ever before experienced. They were helpless in their power to save their Lord. As Peter stood in the palace awaiting the verdict of the court, 
a servant woman recognized him. Thou wast with Jesus of Galilee. Peter, in anguish and grief, felt no spirit to contend with her. There were far more important things that bore upon his mind. He denied being there it was a ruse to quiet the woman. He walked out to the porch and looked into the night. Again another maid saw him and said, this fellow was also with Jesus of Nazareth. Peter was in no mood to banter. Before, while with Jesus, he could wield the sword, rebuke, or contend against any king or soldier. Earlier in the day he could contend against the world. But in the dark hours of despair, and in the grief of losing his lord, Peter was without defense. Denial of his acquaintance with Jesus was an easy way to keep peace. Again he denied being with Jesus. His soul was empty. It was an hour of trial and sorrow for Peter, too. It was a cool April night, and a fire had been lighted in the hall of the palace. Peter approached the fire for warmth. He sat down and stared into the colorful flames as they flicked their way up like dancers. But his mind was far off. Others came by to catch a little warmth before continuing on with their duties. One of the servants of the high priests came by for a moment, and looking down upon the humped-over figure of Peter, he recognized him. The servant was Malchus, the very man who lost his ear by the hand of this man Peter. Did not I see thee in the garden with him? It was the last straw upon Peter's back, and he gave way. In the fury of his anger, he arose from his seat and began to shout and swear, declaring for a third time, I know not the man. His voice was like thunder, and silence fell upon everyone. And the far distance there was another sound faint, but audible. It was the crowing of the cock. As Peter's ears heard the crowing, his heart melted. Another prophecy of Jesus's had been fulfilled, and Peter was crushed. In heartbreaking sobs as only few men ever know, Peter vanished into the night, a broken-hearted man. Peter did not deny that Christ was the Messiah. Peter only denied knowing him or being associated with him. When he heard the cock crow, Peter realized the human frailties of himself and even the other apostles. Peter's heart was always with Jesus, but on this one occasion, not his tongue. Judas gave lip service praise and a kiss, but his heart was black and filled with murder. Peter would do anything for the Savior, Judas would do nothing. Apocryphal history has passed down the story of Peter's capture and imprisonment by the barbaric Romans. In a final effort to bend or break the will of Peter, his enemies let out Peter's wife to be executed before his eyes. Undaunted in his faith in Christ, he shouted to her, Remember the Lord. Then after her death they took Peter to be crucified. This was according to the prophecy of Jesus when he told Peter of his own crucifixion, but said, Thou canst not follow me now, but thou shalt follow me afterwards. John 13:36. But Peter refuged to be crucified as Jesus was because of his reverence for Christ and because of his own unworthiness. The Romans obliged him, and his request was granted he was crucified upside down. Therefore, the sin of Peter's denial of knowing Christ was very minor in comparison to Judas's betrayal of the Savior. Christ showed his forgiveness of Peter's failing, as Peter was the first moral man to see the resurrected Savior, and he lived and died as the chief apostle of the Twelve.